Hello, hello, hello. Are you ready to rock and roll? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll introduce you to one of the greatest social justice activists in the whole world, Mr. Greg Oak. Thanks, thanks very much, Kelvin. And, uh, look, I, I really appreciate Kelvin, uh, owner's king, for making himself available today. Kelvin is, is just uh, an amazing um, Aboriginal health um, activist and human rights activist, fought for so many different causes over the years. Just a remarkable man, and I'm honoured to be on the stage with uh, a staunch Aboriginal co uh, Conrad. Um, I, I, as Kelvin said, my name's Greg Oak. I convene the Australian Mental Health, Human Rights and Law Reform Coalition. Um, and um, we're honoured and privileged to be have been asked to host this um, this rally today for the Forgotten Australians, and we, we are absolutely, totally um, anyway, in sorry. solidarity with your cause and your fight for justice, human human rights, justice, and redress. I, I also would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Wurundjeri people, their elders, past and present. And, and say that this land was never ceded. And also, this is Aboriginal land, always was and always will be. Look, the aim of this rally today is to, to, to certainly uh, protest the lack of resources available to the forgotten Australians. Um, ma many forgotten Australians, certainly despite the, um, the, the, the meaningless apologies by people like Kevin Rudd, Rudd that um, have certainly not been met with uh, real de 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 demonstrable actions to, to, to make sure that forgotten Australians um, um, get some justice for the absolutely hideous crimes that were committed while under state care. Many of the forgotten Australians are still living in appalling housing conditions. Many are suffering from um, disabilities and traumas inflicted on them by the institutionalised and systemic abu abuse um, while under the care of, uh, very often, the church and the state. There have been apologies from the federal government, but the rhetoric has not been matched by real actions. So far, nothing of substance has been put in place to help these survivors and their families improve their quality of life. Many have not been able to escape the poverty trap due to the psychological and physical traumas inflicted upon them. Many have physical disabilities because of what was inflicted on them by the state while under state care. This has prevented many of them from participating meaningfully in the community, accessing uh, education, health services or becoming uh, productive members of the workforce. Most forgotten Australians are certainly still living behind, uh, below the poverty line. Young people were, were locked behind uh, closed doors and terrified while in state care. People did not hear their cries of pain and despair. So we're, we're just encouraging everybody and thank everybody who's attended today, particularly Colleen Hartland, um, the ele an elected Green members uh, for the Western Region. Yeah. Colleen, thanks for that. Yeah. Colleen, Colleen, yeah. Colleen is the only politician in Victoria that has come out here today and Colleen uh, certainly is in the midst of uh, certainly there's election day uh, coming up for the Greens um, prospective Greens uh, councillors and incumbent Greens councillors so Colleen we really appreciate you to be here with us and and I also make the comment what a disgusting uh, state of affairs from the La Australian Labor Party and the Liberal Party every member every elected member in Victoria whether they be federal or state has been advised of this rally and um, ask to attend, or at least um, acknowledge our request. So thank you, Colleen Hartland. Um, uh, we're, we're totally support, uh, support uh, standing in solidarity with you. You're an absolutely decent member of parliament, and it's a pity we don't have a few more people in parliament like Colleen Hartland that actually speaks the truth, the real truth, truth and, re and represent, represents people from marginalised and disadvantaged communities. Thanks, Colleen Hartland. Well done. Many feel discriminated against the vulnerable and shamed in general public. Despite this, many are bravely attending this rally. This is the first time many have participated in a political protest calling for justice and redress. Countless young Australians were abused and violated under the care of the state throughout Australia. They were subjected to gross violations of their human rights, including torture, cruel 
inhumane and degrading treatment, including medical experimentation without their free and informed consent. They were subjected to physical, psychological, emotional and sexual trauma at the hands of individuals and religious organisations that were supposed to and were entrusted to protect these human beings. Countless crimes were committed under their watch, but too often we see these people and organisations being funded by governments to provide the assistance, support that they require on their recovery journey and search for wellness. Simply successive federal and state governments comprehensively failed in their duty of care and, to, and failed completely to protect them. They failed to properly investigate these claims and provide them with appropriate resources to seek justice and redress. Thanks, Calvin. Some people have managed to receive meat compensation, but it was still an arduous and uphill, uphill battle. Many struggle and experiencing, uh, experience great difficulty in tracking down information, and others are made to sign confidentiality uh, agreements in, if they get a legal settlement. Countless crimes were committed under these people's watches, both the church and the state. These people and organisations must be held ac uh, accountable for the complicity in these crimes, and they are crimes, and, and feel the full fa force of the law. The private or in-house inquiry uh, process uh, conducted by the Catholic Church has become a de facto substitute for cr cr criminal justice. Victims are slipped a payment, their allegations once settled can be subject to confidentiality clauses. It must be recognised and not that not one single complaint handle, handled by this uh, private process or investigation process has been uh, passed on to the Victorian Police. This is just simply unacceptable. Irrespective of whether a person making a complaint opts to go through the church's private process, which is basically just to a certain potential liability for damage, it is not for the church to decide arbitrarily or be the final arbiter in this matter, matters involving crime. This has to be the sole, sole domain of the Victorian court system and, and the courts of this state. The Catholic uh, Church's in, uh, inquiry process conducted on canon law involves uh, a so-called independent monitor, which is paid for. This position is paid for by the church. They're an employee of the church, so they're hardly likely to encourage people to go to the police and, and, and make sure that these people are held responsible for their hideous crimes. As the police have pointed out, even recently, there are considerable flaws in this process. There's a lack of transparency. Uh, there's a, the, the appeal, appeal rights are abroga, abro, abrogated. Legal uh, uh, representation can certainly be limited. Um, the in, this independent person gives advice to victims about the prospects of the cases as stated in the criminal courts. This, this advice given by this so-called independent arbiter certainly dissuades most people from uh, contacting Victorian police. Victoria Police claims there have been a lack of cooperation on the part of the church and evidence may have been lost. Ha ha ha. It says the church at times has mis misled police officers, frustrated police officers, efforts to act on warrants, in some cases seeking injunctions. The church in the past has shuffled suspected offenders from location to location, protecting them. The church knew the identity of offenders but failed to hand them over to the state and allow for a full and proper criminal investigation and a transparent hearing in a constitutionally recognised court. The lack of action by Victoria Police and the church's cover-ups and protection of pedophile and violent priests has allowed them to rape their way through generations of defenceless boys and girls. These children didn't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. Maybe it's time to subpoena all documentation between Coors, Westgarth, Chambers and the Melbourne Catholic... Archdiocese. 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 We... we... <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we applaud the comments by Commissioner uh, uh, Ken Lay, but one has to ask why they've been sitting on their hands for so long. The Victorian police aren't... aren't uh, that, the, the, they're great, these comments coming out from Ken Lay, but certainly we really have to commit, uh, uh, question their commitment to, to bringing 
justice for the many victims of the church. And um, but there's um, there's little doubt some Victorian police have also been complicit. They've been silent and failed to act, and therefore have been aiding and abetting pedophiles. The, stolen, the stories of the stolen generation of forgotten Australians certainly must be told. They must be heard. They must be acknowledged and validated for the healing from the, the trauma uh, that they've endured. And that's the only way healing will begin. Meaning apology, meaningful apologies must be made and, and matched by real actions to assist the, the survivors and their families deal with this generational and what has become intergenerational trauma that they have experienced. Apologies have been made and not, and not sufficient, and they're not su sufficient, and nor is the paltry two million dollars that has been allocated to assist survivors. Well, it's, it's one million, sorry, it's one million that really gets into the hands of the people that have actually survived these atrocities of the state. Look, today I stand in solidarity with, the, uh, with all for forgotten Australians and all members of the Stolen Generation and remind people that the dead certainly cannot cry for justice. It's up to the living, up, up to, the living to do it for them. And from the words of forgotten Australian Mark Tor in his um, fantastic song, uh, Call for Justice, thousands of children, where have they gone? Stories we'll never ever know. How much was stolen from our souls to be a survivor, who'd know? Across the land I've heard the call, a call for justice for one and all. Abuse they used in God's name. Another ch child covered in chain. And here we are, still standing all alone. And we're still standing out in the cold. And we're still waiting for our win wings to unfold. So, so many children have been locked away in institutional care and driven insane. I look, and all I can see is looking for the child lost in me. And as night carries us away, can we be happy just for one day? Anyhow, let, let's unite everybody here. We, we must organise. This is really um, encouraging to see so many people here, and we and we have to bring these people out from out, out from the cold, and ensure that they s receive justice and redress for all their experiences, all their experience, and the, the, the humiliation and the hideous abuse that they've had under the so-called protection of the state. Human rights, freedom, respect, equality, dignity, redress. Justice and redress for all members of the stolen generation, forgotten Australians. Okay, you want to do the first guest? Ladies and gentlemen. You know, this bloke here, I actually know him. He knows people I know. <laughs> but it gives me... But it, it gives me great pleasure to actually introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, someone who's actually experienced some of these atrocities. Put your hands together for this fellow here, Wayne Simmons. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your kind words. Um, yeah, talking about earlier about the abuse that's going on in the Commission of Inquiry and events like that, it's OK for the uh, police to have a go at the Catholic Church in regards to evidence not coming forward. It was also Police Commissioner Simon Overland before he retired, whether he was getting it off his chest or whatever, he apologised for handing vulnerable children over to known sex offenders on 70 occasions. So that 70 occasions the Victorian Police Force has contributed in handing over children to, to sex offenders, registered sex offenders. And you know what? You could have heard a pin drop. Nobody cares. You know why they don't? Because it's not their kids. They're not their children. It's as plain and simple as that. Doesn't matter at the colour of your skin. Doesn't matter if you come here by boat or whatever. You're abused in these, in these institutions. We're all abused. So, you know, for the Victorian Police Force to sit back and say that, that's just a cop-out. The other cop-out is the fact the Commission of Inquiry into the Catholic Church. Nothing's going to come of that. You guys know that. What do you expect from that? Nothing but recommenda recommendations that will never be seen to, ever, ever be seen to. The Queensland Child Protection Commission of Inquiry, the recommendations were, and apply Peter Beattie, Lenini Ford, 
Kevin Rudd, all be charged with perverting the course of justice. Yet the media don't want to run with that. That was handed down on the 24th of August this year. And they have recommendations. Lenini Ford, perverting the course of justice for her lack of investigation in the Ford inquiry. Lenini Ford, for her handling of the Heiner affair. The shredded of documents. Those documents related to high profile pedophile ring operating out of the judicial system in Queensland. This doc sorry, this document that I've got, it's available on my computer, I've got the security code. It names names from the Attorney General. It names names. It names people who were paid off, the amount they were paid off. Thirty recommendations, thirty of them. Did you hear anything in the news about it? No, 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 no. So what do you think that what do you think the Commission of Inquiry in Victoria is going to do? No. Sweet FA. And look, it's all a cover up, it's only there to find out who's got the goods on who and then we'll see who how we can sweep it under the carpet. At the moment the Catholic Church the Catholic Church are in the gun, fair enough. They are big abusers, we all know that. But so too are the Salvation Army. So too is Anglicare. Yes. You know, all the other institutions run by Victorian government, government institutions, federal government institutions. <laughs> so, you know, unless we get out and we unite like this and stop the infighting... It's important that we stop the infighting. We're all brothers and sisters. Let other organisations who are funded go and do what they're supposed to do. We need to meet on the steps and we need to be vocal and loud. And not just for us, for our kids too. And very proud. Stand up and put your head up high because you guys are survivors. Greg, Greg spoke before about mental health. Well, imagine a mental health issue amongst forgotten Australians. If you take 500,000 forgotten Australians, you take into account their siblings. Hey, how much of the population is walking around PTSD? How many of the population are walking down with mental issues, issues, dep depression? How many of our brothers and sisters have died? Often, often at the hands of their own, at their own hands. How many? How many get to my age? They've had their children, they look back and they want to reflect on life. It all comes back. It all stares you in the face daily. It could be to look in a child's eye. It'll bring back memories for you. So we, we cannot rely on service providers who sit around on their fat ass and they get paid a hell of a lot of money to do it. And what do they do? We turn up at rallies like this, they, they tell us to shut up. If we stand up and say anything in front of these people, we are told to sit down and shut up. Where are you now? You're not here to tell me to shut up? None of you are. All right, well, look, I'm so, look I, get, I, get, I get really feisty. I've been working on the babies in the unmarked graves up in near coal, Rockhampton. I can't talk too much about that just for the legalities of it all, other than to say things are moving smoothly for us. There are 491 babies out of Broadmeadows Babies Homes. 491 babies in unmarked graves. Thank you to the Catholic Church. You could not even treat us with the dignity when we died. You didn't give us dignity when we were alive and you were treated the same as they died. Those children laying in those graves that could have easily have been any of us. Any of us, some are three or four to a grave. Mass graves, this is Australia. Not friggin' Germany. And as far as all the vaccines on the children, shit, didn't that happen in occupied bloody Poland, didn't it? 1942. The one thing we all did have in common, Wendy, and I tell you what, when we were made a state war, what did they do? They all give us a number. They took away our names. My number, 91703. That's my number. I'm sure you've all got a number. Hey, Yeah, you all, every one of us. What does that sound like? Nazi Germany. Same as the vaccines. Same as the mass graves.
Anyway, <clears throat> I've got to pass this on at the moment because I can really get going. I'm shaking like a leaf at the moment. I feel like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs and I'm getting out of here. <laughs> all right, so you guys, I love you all. Let's bond together. We really have to. Excellent. Well done, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be here today. <laughs> Not only for me, but for you. More importantly for you. And for what has happened to some of us here today in terms of human rights. But we've got a speaker here today from Parliament. The only one I might add, ladies and gentlemen, who has had the gumption to actually come and speak to us and be supportive to us. Put your hands together to Colleen Hartland, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today because over the last two years I've spoken to many of the people who are at this rally and I know your stories. I know how you were abused by clergy, I know how you were tortured, I know how you were separated from your parents, I know how they tried to destroy your souls. But the thing is, you're all survivors and you're all not going to stand back and accept this. Yeah. When you read the submissions to the parliamentary committee, it's quite clear that it shouldn't be a parliamentary committee. It should be a royal commission with all the powers that come from allowing people to actually be heard. Parliamentary committees are fine and dandy, but the recommendations they don't go anywhere. I've seen whole piles of parliamentary committees. Thank you. Um, I've seen these parliamentary committees, fantastic recommendations, nothing ever happens. The thing we have to have is a royal commission. That is what's going to uncover it. When you read the submission from the police, it's quite clear their frustration of trying to to bring the Catholic Church especially to justice. I was raised as a Catholic, I know the power of the priest. I know, I'm in my 50s, a lot of you are in your 50s, you never went against what the priest or the brother or the father said. It just, you know, the nuns, it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we need a royal commission, we need it now. A parliamentary committee is not good enough, but I'll be sticking with you guys You've really got to me. And, and the thing is, you know, I said it to a few of you before, my father had bipolar and my mother didn't cope often and sometimes she wasn't so great at being a parent, but she kept me out of state care. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Colleen. Here's the boss. Look, I'd like to introduce everybody to Jenny Elliott. Now, Jenny Elliott is just a, an amazing individual, and um, um, she's just a constant inspiration uh, for us. And she's actually for for the Australian Mental Health, Human Rights, and Law Reform Co Coalition. He's, she's been awarded one of our um, prestigious awards, named after the uh, the. Certainly one of the most uh, famous um, Aboriginal freedom fighters, Dr. Br Bruce McGuinness, and we'll be presenting that to Jenny later in the year. But um, we thank you, Jenny, for all your support of, uh, around mental health and, um, and the fight for justice, um, uh, particularly for the two, uh, what is it, uh, 1,250 people, uh, 1,250 people that have died under state care in Victoria, under the care of uh, the state over between 2006, 2011. Um, we're fighting for you, you. We're going to make sure everybody's voice is heard about this um, hideous government we've got at the moment, the Bailey government, that has tried to demolish the Victorian Charter of Human Rights, that is trying to certainly um, uh, diminish the, the, the vast numbers of rights for a whole range of issues, particularly in housing, which is one of the really things that really worries, particularly in reference to the forgotten Australians. They're now talking about limiting the tenure of people in uh, uh, public housing. Uh, 
and, and certainly this is uh, resulting in uh, both uh, uh, major challenges to the psychological and, and physical integrity, particularly for a lot of older people. But look, we have to remind and send a clear message to Ted Bailey that this is unacceptable. Uh, the right to public housing is a basic tenant of a, a, a fair and reasonable uh, society and government. We must never lose that. Um, look, these communities, and we hear Channel 7 just taking the piss out of uh, public housing tenants, but I, I assure you, these are vibrant communities, and so many people have uh, created a really good community for them and their families and their loved ones. We must never let this happen. We must let, not let this uh, privatisation of stealth into the hands of these uh, 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 community housing associations that aren't transparent to the uh, communities they serve. They're not accountable. They're even denying their public authorities. So any freedom of information requests to them are being denied. They're saying they're private corporations. Anyhow, enough of our, my stuff, but we're all in this together. Jenny is just an amazing woman she's an absolute inspiration to all of us here and one of the members of the stolen uh, one of the great survivors of the stolen uh, sorry the forgotten australians thanks jen afternoon i think could be morning who knows okay i have written my speech did it on the train and while i was drinking coffee <laughs> i drink coffee lots and you had your iPhone on. <laughs> no, just my iPod this morning. It wasn't the iPhone. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I would like to thank you all for coming to our rally today. I'm going to speak to you about mental health. Now, I wasn't actually going to do a speech today, but it is Mental Health Week. So I thought, well, I'll throw my hat in. Um, since I have started doing rallies for mental health, I'm becoming more aware of the state of the mental health system and how it, how it affects us as adults who have grown up in state care. A lot of my friends and family suffer from some form of mental health disorder, be it PTSD, anxiety, depression, and a lot of us carry suicidal thoughts every day. And how do we end up like this? because of the so-called welfare system. And at the time they placed us in this system and left us there. According to them, children should be seen and not heard. And that is why we suffered at their hands and why we are still suffering because they would like to spend $26 million on a stupid new service that does what? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. People, I have, I know people who have actually used this service, and what do they get? Nothing. Because why? They only know how to use the internet. They don't know how to use a phone book. They might find more people in the phone book. Stupid dumbasses. Yeah. And it was heard when they were handing out this $26 million for their stupid new service. We'll give them a Christmas party. That should shut them up. Well, I say no. They can screw their Christmas party because I ain't going. You never got invited Yeah, I did, see? I stuck my invite on my poster. Well, have a look there and you can ring them up and tell them you want to go. Oh, only if you live out in Dandenong. So, there you go. That's about all they're going to give us is a stupid little Christmas party and we might shut.